What's up guys, it's Nick here with Ghost Bros Gaming and today we have got a Cash Tira counter guide so that you can keep your cards from being banished. But before we get into it, make sure you like and subscribe to the video so we can bring you more great content. All right, let's do it. Ghost Bros Gaming. All right, so first let's look at the problems that we need to address. Um, when we look at a typical cash tier in board now, I'm not going to go through these each individually But you can pause here and look but these are the main problems that you need to be addressing When you're dealing with a cash tier board First up on our list of cards that are solutions to these problems is Nibiru and in my testing I think Nibiru is probably one of if the best if not the best um, counter to Kashira. So Kashira summon a lot to get to their final inboard and one of their monsters has destruction protection which this, get, this gets around. It wipes the entire board uh, so not only are the Kashira monsters not there but also their spell traps that require Kashira monsters aren't aren't useful because they can't be activated. And a lot of the counters that are being run just don't work with against Nibiru. You need some sort of monster negation. Now, the only downside is that you can make Barone pretty easily by normal summoning Ash Blossom or Ghost Reaper or Ghost Bell if you drew it and go into Barone really early on in the play. But honestly, this is still one of the better options. Our next card is Book of Eclipse. And if I were going to be playing um, two cards, so six total cards to counter Kashira, I would be playing three Nibiru and three Book of Eclipse. These two cards deal with the entirety of the boards, right? So Book of Eclipse fits, flips all of their monsters face down, which again turns off the Kashira spell traps, and it can be activated during the draw phase before shang -E ra special summons out another Kashira. The downsides to this is that since it has an effect that draws cards, you can Ash Blossom Book of Eclipse and negate it. Um, some players were playing Forbidden Lance, which makes a monster immune to spell and traps, so they could potentially make their Arise Heart or their shang -E ra immune to this. And if you do not remove the monsters by the end phase, the opponent's going to draw cards, which can be a... a <laughs> a downside to this but honestly if you don't remove their monsters you've got bigger problems so next up is chaos hunter so chaos hunter is is a really good card against this as well i don't know if i would play it over book of eclipse or nibiru but it really stops their plays because shang -E ra can't activate unless a monster or sorry a card is banished face down and so chaos hunter special summoning when they summon diabolus can really just ruin their play um, they would have to have two more level sevens which at that point is going to be tough unless they drew a really good hand to get something out like big eye to steal this or dark arm dragon to pop this and if you're playing Kashira, this is a level seven, so it's also really good um, for your own plays. And on top of that, it stops Dimension Shifter. So if you're playing a deck that wants to keep things from being banished, this is amazing. The fourth card that I have is, it's like a hand trap Chaos Hunter, which we all know what it does, Artifact Lancia. Um, it prevents things from being banished on your opponent's turn which is good because it severely limits what they're able to do. It'll prevent shang -E ra and Minehacker plays. It stops Arise Heart's uh, alternate summon condition, which means that if shang -E ra has activated its effect, you can summon Arise Heart via any Cash Tira monster. You don't need three materials, so you could just use one main deck Cash Tira monster. And it doesn't need to be sent to the graveyard, which is huge in this deck because a lot of times they'll just activate Dimensional Shifter at the start of their turn or Dimensional Fissure. And so a lot of hand traps that need to go to the grave to activate aren't live. The only downside with this one is that next turn, you'll have to deal with the Kashira monsters that shang -E ra summons. Um, and so you potentially do have to worry about 
some player interaction that they're going to have. And if they drew the trap, their trap is live. Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. I really wish this card was better than it is. Um, it, it is good, but it does not stop their plays. They can still go into say like Raid Raptor, Arsenal Falcon to summon out um, the barrier statue, or they could even if they had extenders, use Kashtira Papayas to recover one of the cards that you banished and summon it and then just keep going if they had the extenders. And so it can be good, um, but it's not always great. And you also need a copy of that card in your extra deck, which can get kind of expensive. Regeki and Dark Hole, a lot of people are signing these in in matchups now. It is really good in that you can get rid of most monsters on the field. It just won't get rid of Shang-Yi Ra because it has the destruction protection, um, which means it doesn't address all the monsters. So the Big Bang Trap card that they have set likely is still going to remain live. The pro of this is that it is a versatile card and that if you're playing against, say, other decks, it might be really good. Infinite Impermanence is just a generally versatile card and it's probably a card you have in your deck already. It can be very useful. You can stop Unicorn, which is the main starter of the deck. You could stop Rise Heart, which means that they don't get to banish Big Bang and he is now a level four instead of a level seven. And it can be used on a Rise Heart at the start of your turn so that all the cards aren't being banished when you're making your plays. Um, one of the downsides to Infinite Impermanence is that it doesn't open the zones locked by Shangi Ra. And this goes for Dark Ruler no more as well. Shangi Ra's effect is activated and resolved already and doesn't need its effects to be live. So you can negate it, but your zones won't be opened back up. So that is a downside to infinite impermanence. They don't usually recommend it because if they have the extenders, it's not really going to do anything. All right. So for a quick recap, our best counters are Book of Eclipse and Nibiru because they both get rid of all the cash tier monsters, whether it's by flipping them face down or tributing them which means that you don't have to deal with a Fenrir or locked zones and their spell traps don't work because they don't control a cash Tira. Good options would be Chaos Hunter and Lancia because it hinders their play to not be able to banish monsters. Shang E Ra can't trigger its effect, meaning that they can't easily go into a Rise Heart. They would need three level sevens. And then in the could be better category, we've got infinite impermanence just because usually they'll have an extender to be able to push past that. And then Ghost uh, Reaper and Winter Cherries, just because they've got a lot of options and banishing just their Arise Heart is, is usually just not enough. Dark Hole and Regeki are decent, but the fact that Shang E Ra can protect itself from destruction means that you're still left with locked zones and the trap card Big Bang to deal with. All right, so that is it for the Cash Tira Counter Guide. If you follow these suggestions, you're going to keep your cards from being banished and you're going to win. All right, that's it. Have a great day. Ghost Bros Game.